My name's Tom Seeley. I'm a professor of neurobiology and behavior here at Cornell University. The decision-making process of a swarm of bees is utterly fascinating. What happens is the scout bees fly off of the swarm cluster. They will fly out for great distances, up to several miles. If a scout bee finds a potential home site, she will then return to the swarm cluster and she will announce her discovery to the other scout bees. Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three. She's indicating with that dance the location of the potential home site that she's discovered. And she indicates the direction by the angle at which she orients her body as she walks forward, waggling her body. And she indicates the distance by how long each one of these waggle runs lasts. A waggle run is that period when she's walking forward, waggling her body back and forth. Other bees are watching her dance, listening to her dance, getting the information, and then they will go to the site. If they agree that that site is really good, they in turn will come back and perform their own dances for that site. And then that will stimulate even more scout bees to go to that site. One of those sites will first reach what we call a quorum, a threshold number of bees that are visiting that site. And the bees that are visiting that site, they will sense that, oh, enough bees are visiting this site and thus voting for that site. That tells us that our site is sufficiently popular to be chosen as the home site. One thing to keep in mind about swarming is that it is a completely natural process. It is how colonies reproduce, it's how they multiply. One of the things that the bees do in their decision-making process, which is critical to its success, is that each individual scout bee only votes for a site after she's made her own personal inspection of the site. You don't have any fads of ideas. You, don't, you never see one scout bee perform a dance to advertise to or advocate a site simply because she's seen another bee performing a dance for that site. Any democratic group of humans uh, can work very differently and that can be a problem. Individuals can, can join in on an idea, um, maybe advocate or vote for an idea even without knowing much about the idea, without exploring the idea closely themselves. It's interesting to compare the democratic decision-making process of the bees to human situations, whereas the bees in a swarm, their interests are perfectly aligned. They all want to find the best possible home. In many human situations, you don't have that. You've got individuals with bedrock differences in their preferences. We can really tune up our group decision-making by becoming more aware of where we do have commonality of interest and not focusing entirely on the differences of our interests. I know a lot of people are skeptical about the application of these ideas of bees to humans. I mean, after all, you know, should we use bees as management gurus for humans? Not necessarily, but I think it's intriguing and I think it's inspiring to, to look to see where we can extract some of, the, some of the things the bees are doing to our own situation. Because there are times where humans, humans' interests do align.